chicken nuggets, mint ice cream, olive or lobster tail. No, today we are not going to give you cooking recipes, but rather we are going to show you the last taste cravings of death row inmates. Here's what some prisoners wanted to eat for their last meals. Ronnie Lee Gardner was a wealthy drug dealer when he robbed Cheers Tavern in Salt Lake City, Utah in 1984. During the robbery, Ronnie shot and killed a bartender, taking with him only the modest sum of $100. He was arrested three weeks later, and at his trial, he went on the rampage again, this time killing a lawyer in an unsuccessful escape attempt. He had a gun at the time and smuggled it into the courtroom. Ronnie Lee was, of course, sentenced to death, and as he was a very wealthy person financially, he was quite demanding in terms of taste. So for his last meal, the man didn't mince words and asked for an ambassador's meal, a huge steak, lobster tail, apple pie, vanilla ice cream, and a 7-Up. The prisoner enjoyed his last meal while watching the Lord of the Rings trilogy and reading Divine Justice because he also felt that he was being unfairly accused. After his meal, Ronnie started a 48-hour fast because sleeping on an empty stomach is always better. Gardner was executed on June 18, 2010, with a little hunger in his stomach since he had not eaten for two days. But he will have had his last wishes fulfilled, which is not nothing for someone who killed two people unjustly. Thomas J. Grasso was an American who lived in New York with his wife. In 1991, he murdered a young woman and an 81-year-old man, whom he killed with an electric cord and from whom he stole a social security check. A double murder that he added to a previous one dating from six months earlier, where he killed an 87-year-old woman, from whom he stole money and a television set. After his conviction, Grasso spent his last days in the Oklahoma State Penitentiary. He was confined 23 hours a day in his four square meter cell on death row, which he shared with 49 other convicts. He was allowed only one hour of exercise per day and three showers per week. And to make up for this lack of comfort and allow himself one last treat, Grasso wanted something special for his last meal on the eve of March 20, 1995. The Americans simply asked for two dozen mussels, two dozen steamed clams, with a splash of lemon juice, please, a double cheeseburger from Burger King, six grilled pork ribs, two strawberry milkshakes, half a pumpkin pie with cream, diced strawberries, and a cherry on top, a box of SpaghettiOs. Those round pasta-like things swimming in their tomato sauce, which Grasso was so fond of. The problem was that the penitentiary staff did not honor his request. The convict was given ordinary spaghetti instead of SpaghettiOs and meatballs, and obviously, the menu was not to his taste. A real offense. Feeling deeply insulted, Thomas Grasso did not stop there. Just before receiving the lethal injection, his last words were, I had spaghetti, fresh pasta, not SpaghettiOs. I wanted the press to know that. Decidedly, this is bad luck. Grasso finally passed away at the age of 32 years old by lethal injection. I'm sure that from up there, he bitterly regrets having spat on the soup. Timothy McVeigh is known to have committed one of the deadliest acts in the history of the United States before 9-11. On the morning of April 19, 1995, this U.S. Army veteran detonated a vehicle bomb in front of the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City after having built and driven it himself. This act will cost the lives of 168 people and wound 680 others. Timothy was arrested only one hour later because he had forgotten to put a license plate on the back of his car. Ah, the mistake. Speaking of meatballs, it seems that Timothy McVeigh loved them, especially if they're sweet, icy, and flavored, if you know what I mean. You guessed it. The condemned man wanted a food that reminded him of his childhood snacks as his last meal to soften the terrible thing that was awaiting him. The prisoner asked for scoops of mint ice cream to be brought to him, a strange taste indeed. Looking at him, no one would bet that this terrorist still has a good-natured spirit. And mind you, the big kid asked for a whole liter of chocolate chip ice cream, no less. Two hours before his execution, Timothy asked a Catholic priest to give him the last rites where he had to make a confession of his sins, even the cute ones like mint ice cream. However, he had no remorse about eating his quart of mint ice cream. Anyway, he was no longer worried about his figure. The condemned man had a little stomach ache because swallowing a whole liter of ice cream is not very digestible. But it didn't last long because he received his lethal injection at the Terre Haute Penitentiary a few hours later. He went to meet his lord with a full stomach and fresh breath. Robert Alton Harris was an American, specialized in car theft, burglary, kidnapping, and especially murder. In 1978, he executed two teenagers in San Diego after tricking them and stealing their cars. Afterwards, with the complicity of his brother, Robert Alton went in the same car to rob a bank. He was arrested a few minutes later and charged with murder, auto theft, kidnapping, burglary, and bank robbery. Harris was sentenced to death on March 6, 1979, the first time this happened in the state of California since 1967. Between 1979 and 1992, that's quite a bit of time. A time when the condemned man did not eat his fill, and when he did eat, it was not to his liking. 
That's why when the day of his execution came and he was asked what he wanted for his last meal, Robert Harris let loose. He asked for and received a KFC bucket of 21 pieces of fried chicken, two large Domino's pizzas, an ice cream, a bag of jelly beans, a six pack of Pepsi, and a pack of Camel cigarettes. Clearly, he didn't care about his health anymore. Harris was obviously hungry as he ate everything that night. Of course, that much food was a lot for one man to take in, but Robert Alton was so anxious to make up for all the years of not having a single chicken nugget in his mouth. He must have had a bad night with all that food, but he didn't have to worry about it anymore because early in the morning, he was escorted to the gas chamber of San Quentin State Prison where he passed away, but luckily not his meal from the night before. We must believe that he did not go easy on himself and he had enjoyed his last meal as he should have. Let's make room for a little sarcasm and dark humor. In 1992, Ricky Ray Rector was awaiting execution on death row for committing a double murder. When the guards asked him what he wanted for his last meal, Rector told them that he wanted steak, fried chicken, cherry soda, and a piece of pecan pie. Classic menu. Once he was alone in the cell, Rector naturally started eating. But when the penitentiaries came to escort him to the execution chamber, they noticed that the pie was still intact. Rector hadn't touched it. They then asked him why he had ordered it and not eaten it. He simply replied that he preferred to leave it for later. That's what it means to hang on for dear life. Unfortunately for Rector, the later never happened, and the prisoner did not eat his pie, as he was executed a few minutes later. But at least he made people smile before he left. Victor Figueroa arrived in Dubuque, Iowa in 1960. That year, he rented a room in a boarding house to start calling doctors in the local Yellow Pages. That's how he came across a doctor named Edward Bartels, whom he lied to about coming to his house, kidnapping him, and killing him. A few days later, Figueroa was arrested while trying to sell his victim's car. He was convicted and sentenced to death by President John F. Kennedy himself, but Victor was not just another prisoner. While death row inmates are given fees for their last meals, Figuer chose to go minimalist. In fact, he asked for an olive. Yes, you heard me right, one small olive with its pit. As you can see, this was not going to appease his hunger. After all, he didn't care about hunger anymore, since his real end was near. It wasn't to keep the taste of the olive in his mouth either. You might think that he was hoping to die of choking by clumsily swallowing the pit, and thus avoid all the unbearable anguish that preceded the fateful moment of execution. But it was not that either, because Vaguerre did not eat his olive. This one was found in the pocket of his suit. Unfortunately, he died on an empty stomach. The secret of Victor Figuer was finally buried with him. And oh yes, with the olive too. Adolf Eichmann was a great Nazi criminal. He was a high-ranking official of the Third Reich and was largely responsible for the final solution. He was a very unsympathetic man who was also known to have escaped the Nuremberg trial. After being captured by Mossad in 1960 in Buenos Aires and sent back to Israel, Adolf was sentenced to death in 1962. A few hours before his execution, he was asked what he wanted to eat for his last meal. The condemned man refused this offer because he did not want to eat but rather was thirsty. He then asked to be brought just a bottle of Carmel, an Israeli wine. You might think that this was a way for him to get drunk and make his execution more bearable. But Adolf Eichmann only drank half of the bottle in the end because going before God with a hangover is not very religiously correct. After all, the hangover is nothing compared to all the evil he did while he was alive and for which he will have to be judged. Eichmann was finally executed by hanging in the Ramla prison near Tel Aviv. He will have died a little tipsy, but at least he will not have felt it. During his lifetime, James Edward Smith wore many hats and had many jobs. From fortune teller to cab driver, he mostly claimed to be a voodoo priest. And since these jobs didn't bring him much, he decided one day to rob and kill an insurance agent in Texas, a crime that earned him the death penalty. A few days before his execution, Smith wanted to have something rather special for his last meal. The prisoner asked for riacunda, a type of soil frequently associated with voodoo rituals. The condemned man was believed that if he ate it before he was executed, his spirit would be free to pass into the afterlife and not remain imprisoned in the prison corridors haunting the prisoners and guards. You guessed it, his crazy request was denied by the Texas Department of Corrections. Hours before he passed away, Smith was granted a reprieve. He remained on death row for two years, two more years of suffering for the prisoner, who was finally executed by injection on June 26, 1990. Wonder what he got for his last meal? A small pot of plain yogurt. Not as original as mud, but he avoided serious indigestion in the afterlife. If you were in their shoes, what would you have asked for? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear what you like. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and activate the bell to receive all the notifications and not miss any of our upcoming content.